let's make sure because this is only our second class right because we missed last time so let's make sure that first of all all of us myself included we're all here to serve our purpose last time we talked about why you're taking the class right so let's make sure like the things you're doing are helping you so you fulfill your goal because in about four months the class will be done the only question will be uh, have you passed or have you not passed right and if you haven't passed then I will feel bad because I will have played some role in that like there's something that I didn't do that maybe I could have done to help get you right but most of it's on you because I believe that you guys I believe that we as students we choose our own grade so at some point you're gonna be struggling in some class and you're gonna decide either that grade that you're getting is good enough for you or you want more so now let's see if we can do this oh my goodness let's see if we can do this let's see if we can make it for an entire class no phone like not even on the table like away let's see if we, are you gonna survive Marlene I think we'll survive but will the rest of the world survive because I know you're strong you don't need everybody but maybe everybody needs you hmm. so let's see can we do the whole class no phone that means me too my phone it's right here and let's see it's 502 I'm gonna put it in my pocket I'm gonna zip up my pocket and that way if I cheat you can see okay and there's times like when I could use my phone because you're working I'm not I'm gonna leave it away we're gonna see we'll try I think the answer to this one is yes okay now the last one this is kind of strange you have to own your own learning like we talked about last time I can't teach you math I can give you the information and I can help you make sense of it but everybody has to make sense of it on their own so if there's something you don't know you have to ask and you cannot just settle for getting an answer if the answer is four but you don't know why it's four it doesn't matter you might as well not know the answer you have to know why you have to understand good to go all right this is gonna be like tacos for your brain today it's gonna to be the best I'm excited I'm excited okay we're gonna do a couple things last time we started talking about so you can write this down right here we're gonna to try to separate this and organize some ideas on paper oh if it'll focus So we're going to try to separate this and organize it and make sense of it all. And um, hopefully we can get it to focus. There we go. No, no, this is what I'm going to do. It's kind of warm in here. Okay. Lowest common multiple and greatest common factor. Now, Jackie. I'm not going to teach you step by step how to answer these kinds of questions that ask you about this because you have to know more than just how to answer a question that has that's going to ask you for an LCM or a GCF. You have to be able to use these ideas in other math later. So if all I do is teach you how to answer a couple questions with this, then that means I have set you up to fail when it gets more difficult. Okay, so let's talk about this. Hmm, lowest common multiple, greatest common factor. Anybody know what an LCM is used to do? Mm -mm. Lowest common multiple? Used for common denominators. <coughs> when you add or subtract fractions. Okay? When you're adding and subtracting fractions, that's when you have to use this. It's a math class. We will see fractions a lot, all year. Forever and ever. Amen. Right, Jackie? Okay. Lots and lots of fractions. So we have to really know how to use the lowest common multiple. Greatest common factor is used to reduce.
fractions. Guess what we're going to learn all about on Thursday? Fractions. It's going to be awesome, right? Fractions are your friend. They never got anybody in trouble and thrown in jail or anything like that. Nope. Fractions are good. Okay. Last week, we talked about what lowest common multiple meant, and it meant the smallest multiple, the numbers share. Now, I think I mentioned last time, if you guys can't see what I'm writing, let me know, because, you know, the projector's behind me, so I can't always see very easily. <clears throat> hmm. An example. Anybody got an example of a lowest common multiple? Hi, Hi Yolanda. Hi. How are you today? I'm okay. How are you? Pretty good. Better? Yeah. Yeah, I'm better. Yeah. Yeah, share. Sorry, Marlene. I'll try to write neater. I'm working on it. Marlene, smallest multiple that numbers share. Now, multiple means like, okay. I guess we should write that right here, because this is this is actually what gets confusing. The difference between what a multiple is and what a factor is is why this gets confusing. Okay, so when we're talking about a multiple, that means your numbers go into this other number. That's what we're talking about. So like 10 is a multiple of 5, 100 is a multiple of 10. Hmm. So what do you think? What's the smallest multiple of 7 and 14? Any ideas? Well, 7 would be the smallest factor. Or the greatest factor, I mean. It would be the greatest factor. But we're looking for we're looking for one number. Here's the idea. This is it right here. This is the idea. To find the LCM, we need to find the smallest number 7 and 14 divide into <coughs> evenly of course now it's not 1 do you know why it's not 1 Marlene no. it's because of this okay 7 divided by 1 well that that's 7 that's okay but we're talking about it the other way. See, we want to know, does 7 go into this other number? Like this. That's what we're talking about. 7 doesn't go into 1. Mm -mm. So check this out. Watch. Let me show you something here. Let's take a look at 7. And then let's take a look. Uh, see, so 7. Here's all the multiples of 7, right? Are we good? Like those are all the things that 7 goes into up till 56. These are all the multiples of 7. Okay. And 14, well we got 7, we got 4, oh, there it is. Oh, why did I write 7? 14 doesn't go into 7. I just, you know. Yeah. So it's 14 and 28 and uh, 42 and 56. We're looking for the smallest thing that 7 goes into. These are all the numbers 7 goes into. We're also looking for 
the smallest number 14 goes into. And here's all the numbers 14 goes into. I think that the answer, the LCM, is 14. How many guys? Okay. Thumbs up. Got it. No problem. Sideways. Maybe I got it. Thumbs down. Are you speaking English today? So let's see. Thumbs up. Sideways. Thumbs up. Good. Sideways. Eh. Thumbs down. Let's go over this. Whoa. We got mostly sideways. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. I think it's mostly sideways because I've just talked about it and you haven't tried one yet. So let's see. Let's see. So let's see here. Hmm. We're going to come back to this in a minute. So let's try this right here. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to find the LCM of, hmm, let's do, should we do an easy one? Okay. Eight, hmm, and twelve. Hmm. Hmm. Eight and twelve. Now, one thing I have to warn you against, happens a lot, especially in this level of class. At the beginning, people avoid stuff. They take forever to write it down, and they like get all busy doing other things, but they're just not really trying to do it. you got to make some mistakes. Remember when we talked about our agreements for today? Own your learn. I Own your learning. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Ah. When we're talking about owning your learning, that's what we're talking about. If you avoid it, then somebody's going to tell you the answer and they won't help you learn it. So we're looking for the smallest number these two go into, and I think you should probably work together. I'll give you a moment. Go ahead. See, cleaning the hands, she's avoiding. Hi. I know my buses were dirty actually. Thank you. See, you tell her, you call her out. That's being a good friend. Oh, even better. Physical <laughs> abuse. That's physical abuse is the best. Hey, we're missing people today. The smallest thing. Eight and four, twelve going to. I'm gonna ask you a question here. Why for for when you're done? So you guys can see the timer right there. It says 12:47 at 14. So you get about a minute. We're gonna go over it. And if I go over it before you get it, then I stole a chance for you to learn. I'm sorry. Did I crack the whip? Pressure. Did you get it? I think so. Okay. Hey. You want me to tell you? No, no, not yet. No. no. Jack, you'll get mad. <laughs> Did you get it, Jackie? Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone. Marlene got it, huh? Jeff? Yeah. Hmm, we got 32 seconds left. Did you get it? Yeah. You think so? Well, how do you know if you're right? That's the question, right? How do you know if you're right? That's the key one right there. <laughs> the second way I know I'm right. <laughs> what does LCM mean? It means the smallest multiple. And I just check. If I found the smallest one, then I know I'm right. I don't have to wonder. Sorry. Throwing chairs around, Jackie. Uh, Jackie, did you get an answer? What'd you get? 16? Yeah. Well, does 12 go into 16? No, it's fine. Because you see that. Okay, so 
Jackie, I'm going to... Okay, so, so your answer is not right. That's okay. Because we're going to learn something from it being not right. So here, here's, here's 16. And 16 is not right because it's not common. Common means they both have it. 8 does go into 16, but 12 doesn't. Okay, so you could do this a bunch of ways. But here's how I would do it if I was just, like, kind of stuck. So I'd go 8. Mm, actually, what I'd start with is a bigger number. I'd first see, does this number go into that number? And it doesn't, so that's not it. Like, here's what I'm talking about. If we had 5 and 10, well, because 5 goes into 10, the LCM would be 5. You see what I mean? But this one, nah, it doesn't go in. So what I would do is I would just start doing the multiples of 12, of 12 and seeing if 8 goes into that. So 8 doesn't go into 12, but the next one is 24. Oh, well, there we go. That's it, 24. Yeah, so 24 is the answer. How many of you guys got 24? Oh, good. You didn't get 24? Okay. Do you see how I did it? Yeah. All right, let's try this. Let's try something else. Wait, wait. Let's do our thing here again. Thumbs up. I'm feeling better. Thumbs sideways. Still need some practice. Thumbs down. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Some. Okay. We're mostly okay. Hi. Where's your brother? Oh wow. All right. Okay. So let's do. Let's try this. We're gonna. We'll practice some more LCM in a minute. But let's talk about greatest common factor now. Hey, Jacobo, how are you doing? Good, you? I am fantastic. Now that you guys are here, I was sad. Uh, Jackie was bullying me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so greatest common factor, it's used to um, reduce fractions. Here's what it means. Greatest common factor means, and the words are almost the same. What is the biggest number that goes into our numbers that we already started with. That's what it's asking. So it's the other way. And this is why it's confusing because mixing up what multiple means and what factor means is easy to do. A factor means a part. Yeah. So you're looking for a part that they share. Hmm. Should we do an example? Yes. All right. All right, Miss Felix, you ready? Okay. Oh, there's two Miss Felixes in here. Oh, that's, that's, weird. that's weird, right? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm glad there's not two, two Jesus. You know why? Well, because the like words that end in U.S. the plural is, is with an I, <laughs> so we would have Hazai, and that's confusing. <laughs> right. So I'm glad there's only one Hazus here today. Okay. So we're gonna find the greatest common factor of hmm. Let's do 10 and 15. So when we look at what it means. Because this is what tells you, okay, this is the important part right here. Okay, but the reason why this is important is two things. Number one, it tells you what to do. And then number two, it tells you if you're right. Because when you're done, you just go back and say, oh, did I really do that? Okay, so what is the biggest number that goes into both of our numbers? So when I look at 10, here's the things that go into 10. 1 goes into 10 10 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times, and that's it. Nothing else. So 15, let's see, I got 1 and 15, and I've got 3 and 5, and that's it. And I'm looking for the biggest. They both share 1, but that's not very good because that's not the biggest one. The other number they share is 5. The answer is 5. So the GCF of 10 and 15 is... Bye. Doing good? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay. Should we try one? Okay. 
Oh, Kobo's ready? Yeah. I want to give you a chance, everybody, a chance to write whatever they got. Now, you know, good note taking isn't just writing this down like everything I write down. Sometimes there's stuff I write down that you're not going to write down because it's like, I don't need that. But the really good notes that you need to take are things that I don't even write down that you should because they're things you're realizing. For example, I hope you didn't write this down because that has nothing to do with anything. All right. Right, Jacobo? Yeah. All right, Jacobo. You ready? Let's try one here. Okay. What numbers would you like to use? Mm. You just pick one, and I'll pick the other. Uh, 35. Oh, you're, he's, you're mean. <laughs> he said 35. Okay. So we're going to find the greatest common factor of, here, we'll just turn this over. We're going to find the greatest common factor of 35. Hmm. And, oh yeah, 14. This is trickier. I believe this is trickier. Because you have to think about all the parts of these, and there's lots of parts. Hmm. So it says 221 and 25 seconds. So we're going to go to 23. When it says 23, we're going to go over this. Fifty-three seconds left. Are you nervous? No, did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you're right? Okay. Oh, Cole, you good? Yeah. You're not gonna let your sister get a better score than you are. <laughs> huh? You're not gonna let her beat you? No. Cause you know, like at Christmas dinner, like ten years from now, she'd be like, "You remember <laughs> back in 2018? We took yeah. a math class together. You know, she'd hold it over your head, right? Yeah, sure. Right." <laughs> Okay. Uh huh. Okay. How many guys need more time? Yeah. Okay. You need more time, or are you just totally stuck? Oh. Oh. Well, because if you're totally stuck, more time won't help. You know what I mean? Hmm. Well, check this out. We're looking for a common. Factor. And factor means, if you, in case you forgot, a factor means part. We're looking for what part these share. And here's the other fact. To make um, like 35, the parts are, how are they combined? How are the parts that make 35 combined? We got a couple ways. We got four operations basically. We got add, subtract, multiply, divide. What kind are we looking for? Multiplication. That's right. Cow's favorite math. <laughs> multiply. So we're looking for what things multiply together to make 35. We're also looking for what things together multiply together to make 14. And we are looking for the biggest number that's a part of both. So like when I look at 35, I've got 1 and 35, and I've got 5 and 7, and that's it. That's the only two numbers that multiply together to make 35. Okay, for 14, i got 1 and 14, and 2 and 7. So I think the greatest common factor, when I look at my list, there's only two factors. We have 1 that's in common, and we have 7 that's in common, so it's 7. That's it. See, look, mira. <laughs> the problem, if you're confused, the reason you're confused is you don't understand what this means. It's not because you don't know the steps. It is not because you don't know the steps. It's because you don't know what that means. 
you're looking for what is the biggest number that goes into both of the numbers we have. Another way to say that is what numbers multiply together and which ones, you know, what, what numbers multiply together to make this one, and out of the numbers that multiply together to make this one, which is the biggest that they share? That's what that means. That's what greatest common factor is. It's always about understanding the, the, the language. It's never the steps. The steps are always easy when you understand this. The reason steps get confusing is because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know why you're doing the steps, and then you mix them up. Yeah. Amen. Should we try one more? Yeah? Jackie, you ready? Jackie, this is going to be awesome. I'm excited. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to fill out this little chart. So right here, we're going to have the greatest common factor, and over here we're going to have the least common multiple. Do you see how we're going to do this? And we're going to put our problem, our numbers over here. We're going to try like uh, three sets. Three sets. You ready? Oh, man. Look at She's like, well, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> okay. So let's try this. Now, again, oh, my gosh. I, I'm going to talk a lot about how to be a good student at the beginning of the semester because you're new. Can't avoid. Don't take 20 minutes to write it down. Right. And that's why we agreed we're going to try. We're going to try. Oh, yeah. Okay. You guys were like, we're going to try really hard not even have our phones out. I put mine in my bat in my shirt over there, and it's over there. So we're going to put them away. We're going to see the whole world might end. Yeah, we, okay. So uh, let's do easy one or difficult for first? Easy one? Okay. Let's do four and ten. Well, we're just going to do three, okay? Just going to do three, uh, and you should work together when you need help and talk each other through it. But don't just tell somebody the answer. That doesn't help them. And let's do 27. Hmm, and ooh, this one's not very nice. Let's do 27 and 9. And then let's do hmm, 6 and 8. We'll try those three. Let's see. It says 27 right there. I want to give you plenty of time, so let's 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 see. We might go till 32. It's 27 right there. That's like five minutes for three, well six problems really. We'll see how this goes.
Eileen, you're here today, huh? Did you get a book? Or did you just going to share it with her? Who bought it? Her or you? Oh, well, that's cool. You got to take your friend out to lunch now. And you're Evelyn, right? Yeah. Okay. And Daniela's not here, but, you know, eh, not here. And then Alcobo's here. And Gabby. You go by Gabby, right? I asked, right? Yeah, okay. Jackie Monroy. Hi, Jackie. Mm -hmm. And Ernesto. So we're missing. The only person we're still missing is Oscar, then, I think. Okay. Hmm. Kobo, you got this? Yeah. Is your sister helping you? Yeah, I got stuck on the these common books. Oh, yeah. 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 That's good. I'm glad she's helping you. Because yeah. yeah. you and uh, Isaac didn't work very well, well together, no. right? We were good. Yeah, we were talking about this and stuff. Yeah, you get all distracted, and that's no good. That's why, like, you, you were a little late, but the first thing we talked about today, yeah. it was this right here. Be here to serve your purpose. We talked last time what you're here for mm -hmm. is not to hang out with Isaac. Yeah, I like Isaac. I saw him. Uh, <laughs> I saw him at his work the other day. Oh really? Yeah. I saw him too uh, last week. Yeah. Yeah, I like Isaac. It's not that. It's not. Yeah, yeah. It's not that you know he's a bad guy or you're a bad guy. It's just like sometimes your friends aren't very helpful. Yeah. Right, Jackie. Right. right. Okay, Jackie. Uh, done or not? Let's go over these. Let's see how we did. Okay. So A squared. That's Eileen. Hi, A squared. You don't like that? I think that's cool. A squared. A squared. Yeah. That's what you call you if you had one leg and you were in an elevator. Eileen. Did I tell you that last time? Yeah. Yeah? And the IHOP joke, too? I remember I told you the IHOP joke. But yeah. Well, you know what you call... Uh, a guy with no arms and no legs at your doorstep, right? Do you know? Matt. And you know what you call him if you throw him in the pool? What? Bob. You know you throw him in a hole? You know you call him if you take the same guy and you throw him in a hole? You call him Phil. Yeah. True story. All right. So you're helping your brother, huh? You're helping your brother. That's good. Okay, um, check this out. Another thing, in addition to avoidance, maybe a bigger issue is people get embarrassed when they get something wrong. They think wrong is bad, and it's not. Wrong just means that you have exposed something that you now understand you need to learn. Before you got it wrong, you might not have even known you needed to learn it. So don't, don't feel bad if you got something wrong. Okay, greatest common factor. Let's see, I want to make sure, just for myself. Like, if I were asked greatest common factor of these two numbers, I'm thinking, what is the, here's the key, factor. What's the biggest thing that goes into both? Here's the other thing that's really weird. This says greatest, but it's probably going to be smaller. Because it's a factor. Factors are parts. And it's confusing because lowest common multiple is probably going to be bigger. Because it's a multiple, they're bigger. Okay. Uh, greatest common factor is two, I think. Yeah? What? 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 <laughs> the roof is not my son, but I will raise it. Right, Ernesto? The roof is not my son, but I will raise it. I think the lowest common multiple, though, is bainte. Because four goes into 20, so does 10. 40 is a multiple, but not the smallest. So, word of advice. If you got that wrong, write down, if you got 40, which is wrong, write down why it's wrong. Because that's what's going to make you learn. If you got 20, you maybe got a little practice, but you probably didn't learn much. 
maybe just got a little more efficient at it, but you probably didn't have like an aha moment. Okay. If all this mistake making makes you better, does that mean the youngest child is the best in the family? Are you the youngest? No. Yeah. yeah? Oh, so definitely, right? You're the yeah. baby. Uh, what about you, Marlene? Do you have brothers and sisters, Marlene? Yes. Older or younger? Or are you in the middle? No. You're in the middle? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, the greatest common factor, the biggest thing that goes into both of these is not three. It's nine. Because yeah. nine goes into both, not three. I got three, but I didn't realize it was wrong. Yep. So, if you got three, why is three wrong is what you should write down. Three is wrong because nine is bigger. And we're looking for the biggest one. Looking for the biggest one. Right, Daniela? Biggest one. Right, Gabby? Okay. Hmm. Lowest common multiple. Actually, 27. Because 9 goes into 27, and 27 goes into 27. So good. Hmm. How many guys on the first four? How many guys got at least two right? At least two. Anybody get all four right? Dang. You go, girlfriend. It's cool. Good, good. All right. Hmm. Now. Six and eight is tricky. Greatest common factor is not the tricky part. Um, that's two. Because this is this is two times three, right? And this is two times four. So two is the biggest thing that goes into both. But the lowest common multiple is tricky. So watch, let me show you. Six and eight. So again, here's what I would like. Like Here's one way you can do it. There's lots of lots of ways. But here's one way. Take the bigger number. See if that one goes in. It doesn't yet, right? But then go just do the multiples. So 16. Mm, no. Let's see. The next one's 24. Oh, wait. 6 does go into 24. That's it. That is the lowest common multiple. Yep. Jackie, we doing good, Jackie? Yeah, but there are the greatest common multiple. Factory? Hmm. Hmm. That's so. I'm glad you get. You're feeling better than one than the other. This one gets used more because it's it's what you use for a common denominator when you add and subtract uh, fractions. Okay. All right, boys and girls, onward and upward to greater things. Here's what's next. Next up, Buttercup. going to use it right now, but I'll, I'll do this instead. I got a plan. I would like to have you tell me where the this goes. Is that greater or is that less? Less. It's greater, right? Wait, it's greater? That's greater. Oh. That's greater. That's greater. For example, ooh, I'm gonna write I'm gonna write some statements, okay? And I want you to tell me if these are true or false. So, just because I write them down doesn't mean it's true. You, I want you to tell me if it's true or false. So we'll call this one A and B. One is true, one is false. Which one's true? A is true because five is greater than four. Right. The way that people say it all the time is it's like it's a crocodile and wants to eat the bigger one. Greater, though. It's greater. It's greater. Okay, I'm going to write two things, and I want you to tell me if they mean the same thing. 
So these two things, I want to know, do they mean the same thing? Marlene can't make it. She can't make it. Dang, Marlene, you can't make it. Marlene, are you going to make it? Oh, Marlene, this is sad. You made it, um, well, actually, you made it about 20 minutes. That's pretty, is that a record? Yes. Yeah. You know, there was a there was a commercial on, I don't know, one of the, the Mexican channels. And I, I don't remember which one it was. A long time ago. And it was um, this kid that texted so much. So they had a big family dinner, like, with all the family, like, all the relatives. And his, he was texting so much his thumbs were sore. And his grandmother asked him to pass something, and he picked it up and dropped it because his thumbs were too sore from texting all the time. And it was, you know, for unlimited texting. Do you have calloused thumbs, Marlene? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Marlene, um, I want to know. Here's the question again. Are these two things the same? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe a good idea is if you take 30 seconds and talk to somebody about what it is you think and why. So Ernesto, Evelyn has the same first initial as you. She's right there. So go ahead and talk to somebody. And then, and then you two can talk to each other, and you can, and then you can ask her, and then maybe you guys can do, and then you two are together, so you guys can talk to each other. Why do you think these are the same, or why do you think they're different? Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> wow, your sister's not like you said; she is nice. <laughs> So you guys tell her what you think, or or you tell them what you think, because I know you're shy. I know it's like, oh, math. We don't want to talk about math. That's not good. You don't know? You know what? Jacobo didn't know either, right? Yeah, I didn't know. He didn't know either. But do you now? Yeah. And you only got that way because you were talking about it, huh? Because if you wait for me to tell you, you won't know. You'll have the answer, but you won't know. Hmm. Hmm. You want to tell her? Tell her what you know, Jacobo. Tell her what you figured out, what your sister helped you understand. Um, it's the, the letters are just put in the same. Like the this is what I think Ernesto I think they they're different but they mean the same it's like saying let's see here it's like saying that Evelyn is shorter than me or I am taller than Evelyn it's the same meaning a different way of saying it so this one's talking about A first whatever that means and it says that it's bigger than B this one's talking about B first, but it, the relationship's the same because B is smaller than A. Those are the same. Well, same meaning. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. yeah? You sure? Okay. Hmm. All right, Jackie. All right, Jackie. You ready, Jackie? This is going to be fun. I'm going to write something. And I want you to tell me what number this could be in order to make the entire statement true. So here's the question. What number could x equal for this to be true? Hmm. He's like, I'm so glad I'm in math class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marlene, quit texting me. I'm old and married. Wait, wait. Marlene, we agreed we were going to do phones. Come on, you're breaking. You're letting everybody down. Look at Eileen. She's sad. 
You're making her sad because you're saying that whoever you're texting is more important than the person with you right now. She's not more important because she's not here. And if my mom cared about you, she'd leave you alone during class. You should tell her that. If you cared about me, mom, you'd leave me alone during class. I, what would she say? What would hmm. Yolanda? You have Yolanda. What would you do if you were texting one of your kids and your kid said, "I'm in class." I text my kids and my kids that I'm in class. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you saying she's a bad mom? Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I know, I know, Marlene. So, um, hmm. Dang. Hmm. Man, you know, the sad thing about having a small class is you can't hide. I'm going to pick on everybody. We're going to start with Daniela on this one. <laughs> Hi, Daniela. Hi. Are you having a good day? Yeah. Daniela, what cla- What grade do you want in this class? An A. An A? Do you really want an A or do you just want an A? Because I want a million dollars, but I always <laughs> spend my money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not willing to make the sacrifices to get an A. You really want an A? Yeah. That would be good. I think, mm-hmm. I think that would make me happy. Mm-hmm. Um, Daniela, can you tell us what number could make this true? I mean six. Six? Do you guys agree with her? If X was six, that would work? Yes. Are there other answers? Yes. Yeah, like what, Jackie? Anything above six. Anything above six would work. So six, seven, six point two, a million. Okay. I agree with you. Anything more than I'm saying that I agree with Jackie. Jackie said anything more than six would be true. I agree. Hundred percent. Because everything more than six is also more than five, and this says that five is less than that. Which also means this is bigger than 5. Do you see how they're related to what I just asked you? Man, that was a stroke of genius. Oh, man. Okay, here's the tricky question, though. What is the smallest number for x that would make this true? Hmm. The smallest number that would make that true. The smallest number for x that would make that true. You write it down. Sure. Or you could tell your neighbor or whoever you're working with. But just do it real quick. What do you think? You know. Hmm. Ernesto, do you have an idea? No. See you over there thinking. And smoke is pouring out of your ears. <laughs> oh, man. No ideas, huh, Ernesto? <sighs> hmm. Yolanda, do you know? Do you have an yes. idea? What do you think? Uh, we agreed on six. Six. Okay. Mm-hmm. Does anybody else agree that six is the smallest one? 5.1. Dang! In your face! Oh, oh my God, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> 5.1. <laughs> well, yeah, that's bigger than... That's smaller than six, right? That's true. You guys were thinking, so this is why you, this is why it's tricky, is we were thinking about whole numbers, which are like um, the counting numbers, like the numbers you can count on your fingers, counting numbers. But you didn't think about decimals and fractions and all that stuff. So it would actually be like, like there isn't the smallest one. There isn't the smallest one, because you could just keep adding zeros. So it isn't the smallest one. Hmm. So what? I'm sorry? There's, not a, the there's not a smallest one. There is not a smallest there's one. There's not a smallest one. Because, because like, this is really close to 5, but it's a little bigger. Right. Well, okay. That's even smaller. Oh. But it's still... Because of the never-ending. Uh-huh. Uh, and then now... D- oh, boy. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Smaller smaller. There's not a smallest one. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you guys have your head around that idea? There's not a smallest one. It's just a little bit more than 5. So 5.1 is perfectly fine though. Like it, 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 it makes the point. Yeah. Eileen, do you understand why there's not an answer? Uh, like one number?
Okay. But do you do you get the idea? Like, you can get as close to five as you want without actually getting there, and because you can just keep adding more and more zeros in between, the five points and then the one, you can just keep adding more numbers in between, and it gets smaller every time. Yeah. Okay. All right. My next question, and it's related to this. Oh boy, one of your favorite words that's not fraction. What is a graph? Oh no, Jacobo, you should remember this. Yeah. He's like, oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> hmm. Evelyn, do you know what a graph is? Isn't it just a chart? It's kind of like a chart, but a little different. Yeah, because like, because sometimes sometimes the format's different. That's true, but they both display data or information. Here, here in algebra, like is what we're mostly learning. In algebra, what a graph is, it's um, like, what is a graph? A graph is a way to torture people. Oh wait, no, I didn't mean to say that out loud. I'm sorry. Is a picture of all answers. To some hmm, not always an equation. We're gonna say expression. So check this out. So we got a number line right here, right? And this is the number line for x equals some number. We're going to graph. Here's what we're going to graph. We're going to graph, um, what was it, 5 is less than x? Is that what we had? Yeah? Okay. Now what we're going to do when we graph this, what we're doing is we're drawing a picture of every answer to this inequality right here. So everything we draw on here should fit. So, for example, you don't need to draw this point, but just, just pay attention and watch. Right? Check this out. If I put a dot right here, that means that x could equal 15, and that would be true, because 15 is more than 5, right? Mm -hmm. But I couldn't put a dot here on negative 5, because that wouldn't be true. Negative 5 is not more than 5. That, that wouldn't be true, so I can't do that one. Do you guys understand so far? Okay. So... Everything, like, what about 20? 20 works, obviously, right? And so does everything in between, all of the fractions and decimals and everything. So what we do is we actually draw the line over all of that. I haven't done the whole thing, just part of it, right? In fact, Jackie, earlier, you guys said anything more than 6. So there's 6. Mm -hmm. Anything more than 6 is everything this way, right? Wouldn't you guys agree? Like everything over there? And I could just draw an arrow because it's going to keep going forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Now, here's where it gets confusing. I drew all this not to teach you how to graph, but to teach you kind of what, what it means. Because we can get as close to 5 as we want. And so the way you'd actually graph this is you'd put a circle around the 5. And the circle means you can go all the way up to the 5, but it's not 5. Because if you put... This one it be true, right? That's not true. Five is not bigger than itself. But like Jacobo said, 5.1, that is true. That's what the circle means. The circle means this. And everything bigger. So this is actually what we would draw. That's how we graph x is less, or that's how we gra uh, graph 5 is less than x. So what we did, what we got right here, Evelyn, we have a picture of all the answers for all the numbers that would make this true. That's it. So graph's a picture of all the answers. Okay. You don't have to graph today. Now I know Jacobo knows this story, or he should, and Jackie knows this story, or she should, but nobody else probably does. Mm, I think Eileen's favorite show when she was growing up was Blue's Clues. 
You didn't like Blue's Clues? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Like, come on. Here's the mail that never fails. Are you serious? That's awesome. Right. Okay. Um, and that's the, when Blue's Clues was a brand new show, they would show an episode, and then right after it, they would show the same exact show, back to back, for an hour. So it's a half hour show. When it's over, they'd show you the same one. Marlene's phone's about to get broken. Anyway, put it away. Put it away. They would show the show, and then right after that, they'd show the same show. And the reason they do that is because you learn it the second time. So they're introducing things to you the first time you see it, and the second time you see it, you learn a lot more. It's like a movie you love. When you watch it again, there's parts you're like, ooh, I didn't miss. I missed that before. The reason I introduced the graphing is it does help um, with the inequality, but we're going to spend a lot of time doing it, and I just wanted to get you to kind of be aware of some of the ideas so that later, when we introduce this again, maybe it'll make more sense. Okay. All right. Almost done. We have one last thing left. We are 56 minutes into class. Look at that. Isn't that special? Oh, I think we should practice a couple things real quick with those inequalities before I forget. So just real quick, it'll be like two, two, three minutes. So I'm going to write some statements. And all I want you to do for this first, I want you to say if it's true or false. And the second one I want you to do is add one of the symbols to make it true. Okay? So A. Mm, four Those are probably pretty easy. Mm, one more. Ooh. Oh, man, you're probably going to learn stuff there. Look, look, um, a change in attitude is really important because when you see something and it looks tricky, you just got to think, oh, I'm going to learn something there. I got your back. I won't leave you to drown. Yeah. Okay. Mm. even put this up here for you. you use equal sign. What do you think, Jacobo? You got this? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. It is. Done, Jackie? Yeah. All of it? Yeah. Are there any? Why you were writing it. Okay. Are there any that you're confused about? Yes. Which one? Um, e. E. On the second one, which I think I might. Okay. So do me a favor. Well, do yourself a favor. So this is one thing that hurt you last time. As soon as you got done, you would start talking to class, which means you weren't learning because. 
you're going to learn even when you're done because you're confused. I want you to write down, for you, not for me, why is that one confusing to you? See if you can write, because, yeah. I can't answer your questions and help you if you can't say why. Well, so then write that down. Trust me. I got a plan. I've done this for a while, Jackie. Is Marlene done? Is Eileen? Oh, you guys, your name's Rhyme. Oh, boy. Eileen, you're done? Okay. Gabby, are you done? Mm-mm. Is Hakova done? Yeah. Yeah? Danielle is breaking our agreement. Look at that. Hmm? See that, Hakova? She's letting you down now. See, look, look. Oh my gosh, watch. Let's let's go back to this. Look at this. I know that you guys were a little late, but but one of the things we talked about is don't settle for answers. There's still thinking to be done. That's why we're here. All right, Ernesto, you ready? Let's do this, even if you're done or not. Um, you guys tell me. Out of the first over here, the first five, which was confusing, most confusing, A, B, C, D, or E? E? E. E is confusing because of this. It's the stupid PEMDAS stuff. You remember that, right? PEMDAS stands for Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Slutty. I mean Sally. Sorry. I get it mixed up. Yeah. I get it mixed up. I'm sorry. Yeah, forgive me. That's not even appropriate. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just wrong. So... This exponent, do you guys remember what that little 2 right there means? I mean, it is an exponent. Do you remember what it means, though? It multiplies itself. It means this number here being multiplied by itself. So it means negative 3 times negative 3. So that number is actually 9. This number is 9. Because three times negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So negative times a negative is positive. This one is 4. So that's true. Now, when we talk about not settling for answers, if you write true, that doesn't mean you understand. Yeah. Because the thing I really wrote, the reason I wrote that problem is to try to get you to understand, the, the first of all, that a negative times a negative is positive. Second, that square means you're multiplying it by itself. But if you look over here, I did something a little different. I didn't do it just to torture you. That's mostly why, but not entirely. There's stuff I, I'm hoping you're going to learn from that. Evelyn, you getting tired? Yeah, I know. These classes twice a week that are supposed to be, how long is it supposed to be? Like almost two hours? Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. We're, gonna, we're almost done, okay? We're almost done. So, so stay with us. We're going to do this, and then we, we're going to do one more thing, and that's it. You said one more thing after this. That's right. We're going to finish this, and then one more thing. That's it. Because this wasn't new. This was review of the other. I want to give you a chance to practice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, true? True. Yes. yes. True? True? Yes. True. False. False. See, on a number line, that way is positive and this way is negative. Bigger numbers are farther that direction. Smaller numbers, that way. So negative 4 over 2, 402 is way over there, and positive 14 somewhere over here. That's bigger. Okay. And, okay, now. Good? Mm -hmm. Because this one's farther left. It's bigger negative direction. Like it's farther away from zero, but that makes it smaller. Yep. And now this one. Jackie, do you remember what these bars mean? They mean absolute value. Do you know what that means, Jackie? It means absolute value is a distance from zero. Absolute value is a distance from zero. So what this is, is it says negative 27.
How far is negative 27 away from the number 0 on a number line? 27 spaces. How far away is this one? 27 spaces are equal. Yeah. yeah, it's just the distance. So distance is always positive. So like, for example, uh, roughly, distance-wise, Hermosillo and Phoenix are the same distance from here, approximately. Even though they're completely opposite directions. It's the same distance. Yeah. Ernesto, we good? Okay. Ernesto, what about this one? This is the last one we have to talk about here. See, this is weird. This one is definitely positive 16. This one's actually negative 16. Well, here's why. When you look at negative 4, like, what's 5 minus 4? 1, right? Would you get, everybody agrees that's, that's 1, right? That's 1, okay. Um, 5 minus 4 squared, what is, what is 4 squared? Just because when you look at PEMDAS, when you look at PEMDAS, don't exponents go before subtraction? So you have to do 4 squared, this is actually 5 minus 16. It's not negative 4 times negative 4. That, that thing right there, 5 minus 4 squared, is 5 minus 4 times 4. That's 5 minus 16. Just like that. So we will talk more about that one in the future, too, when we do the PEMDAS stuff. OK, Daniela, you ready? You sure? Hmm. Okay, Daniela. Jacoba, did you hear about the guy who walked into the bar and said, ouch? No. No. He walked into the bar. What? The guy walked into the bar. Oh. Oh. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jacoba, did you hear about the horse who walked into the bar and the bartender said, why the long face? Mm. Long face means you're sad. That's why some people go to a bar. Horses have really long faces. Oh, okay, okay. I know. I'm sorry. All right. Where you find your jokes? I make them up. Do you really? Sometimes. <laughs> the ones I make up the one are the ones that my wife hates the most. <laughs> That's a true story, Jackie. All right, Jackie, we have one last thing. You ready? You ready, Jackie? Mm -hmm. We have to do add, subtract, multiply, divide, positive and negative numbers. Ernesto, I'm hoping we get this down really, really good because it makes me sad when people are doing complicated math and they mess this up. Right, Gabby? This is your favorite, right? There's two things that people say in math are the most difficult. Number one is negative numbers. Number two, well, probably number two is negative numbers. Number one is fractions. One of the two most commonly stated things that are difficult. Okay, Evelyn, you ready? This is showtime. Yeah. You ready? Let's do this. I'm, oh, yes. I like your attitude. We're going to do multiplication and division first because it's the easiest for this, okay? I promise. Look, so to multiply and divide, multiply or divide. Fact. Your answer. is positive if your two numbers being multiplied or divided. You guys know what I mean by this right here? Multiplied or divided? Yeah?
That's it. If they're the same sign, there's two numbers, right? If there's two numbers that are the same sign, and you're multiplying or you're dividing, your answer is positive. Always and forever, amen. For example, mm, 14 divided by 2, that's famously known as 7. Look, positive, positive, positive. Negative 14 divided by negative 2, 7. Promise. People will never believe me until we put it on a calculator, but I promise. A negative divided by a negative is positive. Negative times a negative is positive. If they're the same sign, positive. That means that, Jackie, the only way to get a negative answer, different signs. Different signs, negative answer. Now, we could spend a whole bunch of time figuring out why that is, but we're just going to go with the fact for now. So we can spend time on bigger, bigger things. Daniela, you're good with this? No problema? Okay. Eileen, good? That's pretty simple, right? You don't have to worry about, like, oh my gosh, I hear these teachers, they do, they teach these students things like, you got to love to hate, to hate to love, and that's supposed to somehow translate to these two facts, and I don't get it. Hmm. Wait, say it again. It again? <laughs> I don't even know. I, I, it's like they say you gotta, like they say positive is love and negative is hate, and then they try to like come up with all these rules that are supposed to make this make sense. But I think you're smart people and that you can understand that. Same sign, positive. Different sign, negative. When you're multiplying and dividing, adding and subtracting is different. Adding and subtracting is more tricky. Listo, Ernesto, or not yet? Yeah. Okay. Add, subtract. Okay, this is a little trickier. Oh, there we go. This is where it gets trickier. Evelyn, it's like this. If they're the same sign already, you just add the numbers, the sign stays the same. Okay, so that's that one's not hard. So let's write that down. Um, same sign. Add the numbers and keep the sign. Okay. You good with this too? Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Okay, good. So an example of that would be like negative seven minus four is negative eleven. Or 7 plus 4 is 11. Mm, Yolanda, the only thing that sometimes people really mess up with this, sometimes this will be written in a different way. It'll look like this. It's the same thing. These are the same. You're adding a negative number. This and this are 100% the same. That's the only thing that sometimes people will mess up. Is she bullying you again? Huh? Is she bullying <laughs> you again? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Ernesto, we good? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. Okay? This is when they're different signs. If they're different, here's what we're going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to subtract the numbers, not the hashtags. Subtract the numbers. You're going to keep the sign of the bigger number. Now, I think you guys understand when I say bigger, we're talking about like the distance it is from zero. So like 1 is bigger than negative 400, but 400 is a bigger number than 1, so we're talking about like that. Like For example, 
1 minus 400. Oh, that is negative 399. Or negative 400 plus 1. Still negative 399. See? Different signs. Subtract them. Keep the number. Keep the sign of the bigger number. 400 is a bigger number than 1. That's what we're talking about. Or, check this out, Jacobo. This would be positive 399. And this would be positive 399. Jack, are you good with all that? Okay. There's one other thing that happens with adding and subtracting. Do you remember? That minus and negative stuff? Oh, yeah. That one you just gotta see it. So number three, and this one's really kind of straightforward. I'll just we'll just do it by example, okay? Let's do five minus three. Five minus negative three. Do you remember? That's eight. Because we we'll do it in a different color. Do you remember? Plus. Do you know you no? Okay, so check it out. Yolanda, here's how it works. If you have um, okay, here's why it works. Let me explain it first. Minus actually means opposite. So when we see 5 minus 3, that actually means 5 plus the opposite of 3, which means 5 subtract 3, because subtracts the opposite of that. So that's 2, right? But do you remember playing opposite day when you were a kid? If you said it's not opposite day, it meant it was? This is not opposite day. This is the opposite of adding, and then once again the opposite of that, which makes it adding. This is not at. This is not not adding. It's the opposite of the opposite. So that's why it becomes plus. It becomes addition. Hmm. It's kind of weird. So all you got to remember, it will make more sense of this later, all you got to remember is if you see those two minus signs together like this right here, don't worry about this one. You see those two together like that, that really means plus. You see those two doubles like that, it means plus. And so then you do whatever's left over. So this is really negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. Yeah. Ernesto, you're good. Okay. Are you rock solid? Are you you're not? Are you Gucci? Oh, you're just so so. With these things? Yeah, I understand. All right, boys and girls. You ready? You ready? Jackie's ready? Jackie, here's what we're gonna do. Tuesday. That's today. We have class Thursday. Right? That means we have homework today that's due Thursday. But because we don't have a whole lot of days, it's going to be really kind of short homework. Tuesday. Oh. Homework. Which means it's going to be due next class. Now, I want you just to do it in your notebook. Now I'm going to come around and I'll see you do them all. So, to get full credit, you have to try all the problems. That's it. Okay, got to try them all. So it's in the book. I just picked a couple of problems from each of the things we learned today. So here's 45 through 47 in chapter 1.1. 1 .1. Chapter 1.2, uh, 5 through 11, 31 through 35, and 55 through 60. Well, those are the things we learned today. So none of them take a long time. So I'm, my goal, my hope is that this, this homework shouldn't take you more than even being really careful 20 minutes. But if you try to rush it in 20 minutes, you're not going to learn, and then, then you're wasting your time because you're not doing it for fun, right? Hokobo is. Mm -hmm. He does this for fun, but everybody else, we're doing it because we want to learn. Right? So serve your purpose. All right, ladies and gentlemen.
That is all I have for you wonderful people. I don't get to leave, but you do. So if you have a question for me, you want to, you have something you need to talk to me about, I will be here. If you don't have a book yet and you want to take a picture of these problems and somebody here would let you take a picture, just bring them a Starbucks next time and I'm sure that's a good arrangement. I forgot my book today. Oh, that's all right. You have it at home? Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to bring it to class. I mean, you're fine as long as you've got it.